Welcome to the video installing Arco Linux DI3. I'm going through the motions, meaning there is phase one, which is a virtual box installation or an SSD installation, of course. And then you end up when you reboot on this login screen. So phase two, what's that? Let's go to the virtual box, first login. Three things to do first. First, make sure you have the fastest Arch servers around. Depending on where you live, the script is going to look to the servers and say, okay, what's the fastest computer in the neighborhood? If that's done, then we're going to update our system. This is not a Linux command, it's all in the alias. So update is going to sudo pacman minus syyu. So update. What's coming in? Uh, I see already a virtual box guest, so reboot, and I see a Linux kernel, so reboot. So two reasons if you see those in the list to reboot when working on virtual box. Then um, what is this? This is the Arch repos and the Arco repos that are updated. Anything from the AUR will not be updated. If you want everything to be updated, including the ones from AUR, the A in the end stands for AUR. Everything is up to date. I saw a kernel, I need to reboot. And then we're going to install whatever system we want. So Arco Linux has three major projects. The big one is uh, just Arco Linux has um, three desktops, XFC, Openbox, i3, and you switch between them like, like uh, very easy. And it's, uh, well, all your wallpapers and all your files will be the same. Arco Linux D, that's this. Then you say, well, let's get some scripts. Let's, let's install a base installation, that's done. And then afterwards, we are ending up in this black TTY screen. And we can just type ahead, uh, command by command, and install uh, any desktop environment you'd like. Or you say, let's reuse the work they got, the guys did here, and let's reuse the scripts and change the scripts, of course. So you can edit it like so. These are the scripts, and if you want to change them, the content of it, then you just go ahead with Nano or Sublime Text or Atom or any other Genie text editor. This one is going to make sure that the installation goes very fast in the sense that if you have four cores, he'll use four cores. That's particularly interesting for building and compressing and things coming from the AOR. Then we're going to need something to look at. So a display manager is going to be LightDM and our desktop is going to be i3. And everything is going to be installed and to be, um, well, to go more in details, it's actually i3 caps next git that we're installing. We just say in short, it's i3, but it has caps. It means that the tiling uh, windows are not glued together, but they can have a cap of two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred uh, pixels in between them. That's up to you to decide how big the gap is. All right, <clears throat> do we want music? Yeah, sure. Whoops, that's not the one. So do we want music? 110, yes. Next up, FFmpeg, video as well. Almost there. So, next up is, do we need Bluetooth? So that's for you to think about, do you have a headset, do you have a, a mouse or a keyboard in with Bluetooth, which I do not recommend by the way. I always use cords, no issues whatsoever on any Linux distro with a cord. Then we install some printers. So if you don't want printers, you do not run this script. 
even if you uh, after installing all this bunch of software you say this printer of mine is not working that's possible you need to install the drivers for your printer and often it's on the AUR so I have to install it myself for my Canon printer here so no worries people will have figured it out and shared the knowledge Samba is actually to share I have a folder on my computer and I want Eric to be able to log to the in and to go to my folder and download video or mp3 stuff anything really what's in that folder and then we're going to look around in our network with network discovery and go to our NAS or network attached storage then let's get all the stuff that we need from the Arch repo so this is Arch Linux the repo from Arch Linux getting GIMP Inkscape GNOME screenshots and if you don't want these applications well you just put a hashtag in front of it simple as that it will not be installed of course you can delete the line but what if we make in a few months time you go back and check our github and say let's see what they have changed so you have the github that you downloaded a month or two ago then you get a new github then you compare with melt and you have if you just edit an hashtag you just see the difference of one 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 character really that's the only difference now you know okay i decided to not install it let's wait for the installation here and pause the video just to give an example about editing I just opened here my uh, Arco i3 I go to 200 which we are running right now and I'll open it and I'll move it over here a little bit bigger I just decided here not to install FileZilla for the coming months and with just one hashtag in front of this line it's coming becoming text is becoming unreadable for the script it's just gibberish it does not going it's not going to install this filezilla saving it and next time you run while you download this this github you'll see that filezilla will not be installed it's that simple put a hashtag in front of it all right done next up 300 awar arch user repository the things that come from AOR are bound to break at some point in time. Why? Because it's a user and a user is, um, is sick and is unavailable and has holidays and things change like everything in the world. Everything changes and links to a file change. Even one letter or one figure that's different and it will hold, it will break. So it needs maintenance and the maintenance is done by a person like you and me and um, well that's all it is so you'll just have to wait or flag it out of date on the internet on the AOR uh, website and say look it's not working anymore because of and that's the thing AOR is not Arch AOR is coming from Debian it's coming from Red Hat it's coming from zip files and github files and things like that and if something is wrong or check some or MD5 some anything really lots of things that can then can go wrong then uh, you'll get an error in the installation all you need to do is uh, well we could figure it out try to find the solution but you can also go to the AOR website and flag it out of date and then the maintainer gets a mail and say, oh something is up with my package and then he can investigate so waiting for this installation to finish all right we're finished with this um, this one 300 now we're going to 400 which is an arch linux repo but uh, distro specific so things that we need for i3 that are coming from arch repos like dmenu so and installing qt4 again anything you don't need you don't you just put a hashtag in front of it it will not be installed and number 500 is again from the AOR, but this is uh, distro specific. And we are downloading, I see i3 blocks and um, yet, hmm, I'm thinking about leaving that one out. 
that's for the Konki Zen. Normally a Konki is not used in i3, but hey, it's, what is it, 0 0.07 megabytes, so whatever. And then we have uh, 600 to go for. 600 is our, our Arco Linux Arc theme. So when we say that Arco Linux is 90% Arch, 7% AOR, and 3% Arco, I believe uh, we are even less here. Since this is a tiling manager, we do not need all the packages from Openbox, for instance. So everything is set. This is the very, very important uh, script there, 600. And 700 is going to install fonts because if you don't have beautiful fonts, you won't have a beautiful desktop, simple as that. And if you do want to have um, the conkeys for some reason and try them out, then often they use these uh, fonts and they're now installed. You can of course use the fonts in GIMP, Inkscape for your own personal project. They're beautiful fonts. And then we need to log out to log in. That's just a choice. If you're at home and nobody touches your computer, why not? So it means when you hard reboot your system, you just end up in i3 rather than in LightGM asking you, who are you and what's your password? So this is my login and there we go. Some fixes for the microcode. Some uh, people have problems with the Intel microcode. The only thing you need to do is run this, solved, right? And last but not least, we want to see the same, sorry, we want to see the same uh, cursor everywhere. So depending on the software, now it's fixed, we'll always see a white cursor when moving in our systems. Let's reboot. Now, if you do a vanilla installation in Arch Linux and i3, you are stuck with a black screen with a number in the left, and that's it not knowing what to do and what to touch, no keyboard shortcuts will probably gonna work. Very good that this happens. So if you see, whoa, what's this? This is broken, why did I do that? Well, the only thing you need to know is that LightYM does not really, from time to time, depending on the desktop and on his day, on his mood, you know, does not know the resolution. Super X is uh, the way to get out here. Let's click it again. Okay, since it's that small, <laughs> it's that red thing here, and I'm gonna log off an L. And now, now LightDM says, oh, I have 1920 and 1080. And then um, going back in, everything is normal again. So it's, it's more a virtual box thing and a LightDM thing, I don't know what it is, but it's simple, log out, log in, it applies to plasma, to cinnamon, to everything. And then again, he, it kicks in and it figures it out and it says, all right. The other way is with X render and A render, which is kind of difficult. Log in, log out, or well, first log out, log in. Done. This is our look. This is beautiful, right? This is when you start our system and it's definitely completely different than a vanilla installation Arch Linux with no um, i3 config. So we have a complete i3 configuration in the system. And what we have done here now, so, oh yeah, let's put uh, the key, the screen key on, super shift T, screen key. So you see what I'm typing here, super shift return, or super shift return, right, is this one, and we can check it out. So we have done these guys, these guys we ran, and this is just maintenance for GitHub. All right, so this concludes our video. We have lots of elements to, to figure out and to show. Uh, maybe one thing I'll say already in the video is that your configuration is here. Everything that sets up your i3 is in here. All right, moving to phase three. This was video of phase two, installation of i3.